<laughs> hey, everyone. Hi, Catherine. Hey, James. Good to see you. I'm so glad that your internet was uh, was kind enough to let you join our Friday fireside chat today. Well, I don't know if that's actually going to hold, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, it's good. Well, you know, it wouldn't be the same without you. That's um, sure. Well, I feel the same. I don't think I would enjoy it nearly as much if I wasn't here. Right? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so we're just waiting for some people to join. We do have a few here already. Hi, Mike. Uh, there's Danny, Dominica, James D, Johnny B, Mandy. I know Melanie's there as well. Thank you, Melanie, for kicking everything off. Appreciate that. Yeah. So I guess we'll just wait a minute more to see if there's any others coming on. Here comes Angela. I think I think it might have been that there's an app called Discord, and I think it was open on my laptop. I'm hoping that that's what was causing the issue today. Was that Discord maybe was just up and running? And, right. And that's a pretty probably a pretty internet intensive app because it's all all these different groups and stuff so that's what it seemed like it was resource hungry like yeah yeah bandwidth was so, just shot yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that 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 maybe that problem's even solved and it could have even been that ever since people started noticing the bandwidth problem could have actually been when i installed discord i i i don't i haven't pulled a quincy yet and forensic five this but uh but that's yeah. what i'm what what could be the case? So well, yeah. we'll we'll get the boys in the uh, in the forensic department to uh, investigate that for you and and then let you know their findings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I would definitely love to know if anyone does see any kind of fragmenting with me. Uh, please let me know because I it's just it's just good to know that this is all related. So yeah, For right now, like your picture is coming across clean and and smooth and clear. I think, yeah, I think it's when the streaming itself happens that that takes a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this this is pretty internet intensive too, but yeah. It, yeah, it's, uh, true. But I'm seeing it all great. Like, yeah. Like Mandy, I don't know, I don't know that much about Mandy, but whenever she's here, she's always like in this rumble seat, like she's on her way to like an airdrop, like over Afghanistan or something, and she's like, "Yeah, we're coming in hot." So look, I'm watching my show, okay? Yeah, we'll land, but I'm watching my show right now, all right? So just be cool, man. We got it. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm in a semi. So I'm trying to, um, like, strap myself down, but I am bouncing around a lot. <laughs> I like it. It's, it's It actually shows me how well my bandwidth is doing because it's really clear is what I'm trying to say. And Angela's got okay, a fire sweet. going. Yes, awesome. thank you. Yeah, I was getting ready to uh, to show show my own name. Angela, that's great. Oh, look at that! Beautiful. I I really like that, Mandy, too, as like an analogy. Um, you know, bouncing around, but I'm like trying to strap myself in <laughs> for life, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, where are we forward to? Okay, well. I say we um, we just kind of kick this off, um, and again, it's a it's a fireside chat. So you guys, please feel free to unmute and um, and 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 speak up. <clears throat> I have to apologize in advance for my uh, my little doggy here, who seems to have really good timing for when I get onto a Zoom call. So I I, I come with my little treats and arms and everything. I, needs a bit of training there, I think. <laughs> But um, so um, we were talking, you know, and I was talking to Melanie um, and, um, you know, about kind of what we wanted to, what would best serve everyone um, for the fireside chat today. Um, and as we talked about, we are going to be moving on to another platform, um, StreamYard. Um, but for today, we just, to keep it simple, we, we're going with the Zoom and just starting the year off kind of in the same format that we, that we finished it off. Um, with the New Year's Eve chat. Um, and so I was doing a, um, a gig last week 
and um, normally I'll do like a little video and and I did a couple of videos and it just wasn't kind of gelling with me like hey you know come on down you know and I thought what you know what am I really feeling here um you know what can I say that's authentic you know and I thought well you know it's the beginning of the, the new year here we are in 2022 and um and so, well, really what I just want to do is, you know, set some good energy for the year, good intentions for the year. Um, so I, you know, so I, so I kind of went with that. And then, um, and then I read um, James's thing on Patreon the other day. Um, and, and that kind of reminded me of that too, where he said, we kind of got through 2021. Um, and uh, you know now now it's a new year. It's a different energy for this year. Um, and so um, you know, despite everything that's going on in the world, um, you know, just the importance of setting intentions because we can get distracted with everything that's going on, and then it stops us from being in creator mode for our own, you know, our own life and existence. So. Um, so that was kind of the the backstory, I guess, was, you know, we kind of got through 2021, here we are in 2022, and just about setting intentions, as opposed to kind of New Year's resolutions, um, more of a, a setting the energy and the tone and, you know, for ourselves individually, and as a collective too, because we're all, you know, we're all connected. So, um, and I thought, you know, James, and anyone else really um, just talking about the mechanics of of intentions and setting you know setting the energy or setting intentions yeah yeah the actual uh practical um circuitry right uh of actually setting an intention and 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 seeing it through i i uh I don't even feel like I, this is just me personally. And, and I don't even like that, that I, that I got to color the year. Like last year, it was just about survival because some, some of us have just really, really not had that experience at all. It's been uh, super positive. Not even that survival is not positive. It's just uh, personally for me, I don't really even think that setting intentions is uh, is something that that I can. I don't know. I'm still wondering if if that's. I don't. I've never really adopted a New Year's resolution policy for myself. I like that we're not calling it resolution, but I have this week really tried to reflect on last week, and that's what that letter shows. And um, I know that no matter what's going on. I'm not the kind of guy that can actually like, I think the most constructive thing that I can do to set the intention, I'm finally getting ready to say something, I swear. I, the, the most effective way that I can set a resolution or an intention, I think, is to just simply find myself as deeply as I can and engage in what I'm doing and <clears throat> not really want to engage in anything else but that. And that I know that when I talk about what I'm going to do, I get pretty, I feel super drained when I'm talking about something that I'm going to do or that I'm, I'm usurping someone's witness to listen to me, tell them about what's going to happen in the future, that kind of thing that I, I don't like that exchange. I, I, I get why we do it. So it's not like I'm trying to, it's like sometimes I give hope a bad name, but I don't mean to say no one can use the word hope. <laughs> so I'm not saying no one should do this. I'm not at all. I, I just, when I set an intention, I, I tend to also really create a vacuum. I declare a lack. Is there some, if I want to, someone wrote today, ask and ye shall find and, and or seek and ye shall find and, and really seek, seek and ye shall lack. It really should say, seek and ye shall lack. Lack and ye shall fill. That's really what it should say, that the true mechanics of seeking something even puts you in a state of, I am missing something. And as we get older in life, um, 
as we get wiser in life, we we embrace our finitude, but at the same time, sometimes it will cause us to kind of squeeze and constrict onto what we're trying to accomplish, like midlife crisis, starting a family, getting a job, getting raised, buying a house, buying a car, paying off the house, paying off the car, paying off the divorce, paying off your student loans, all that stuff, that that's just a, a systemic crutch of simply removing yourself from the now. And if we understand that this entire society is insane, if we understand that the entire time the long bus was the short bus, like if you really look at the fact that the fucking long bus this whole time was actually the short bus, you can start to look at holidays and compassionate and see, oh, it's not that society was trying to take me out of my mode. It's the society has to set up these really pathetically simple turnstiles so that people can just <clears throat> meander through their timeline and just get through the year that 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 would be a it, the 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 base minimum of the footprints that are painted on the sidewalk so you know well people keep wandering out in the street well let's paint shoe prints on the sidewalk so no one can sue us it's like that kind of thought where you you know it's the lowest common denominator, but you still want to do something. You have to do something. And when I start to look at society through that lens now, so many things seem like really compassionate, just nice things <laughs> that, that people have done that end up just being the worst kind of mind control you could possibly imagine. But it actually really does help. The, the two-party system is a perfect example of that. It's like the perfect example of that. It's well, what do I think? I don't know what to think. Do you have any suggestions? And what is what is a good waiter do? A good waitress says, yeah, our special is the halibut. Man, it's freaking awesome. And she tells you, we have red halibut and we have blue halibut. And she puts it up and we can say, oh, that's cruel. That's a Hegelian dialectic. And it is. I'm not saying it's not. But at the very, very base level, there is a, a three-year-old in a 60-year-old body. And he's got a pension. He's got all this stuff. He's got this house. He watches rockets take off. He's like, fuck yeah, man, fuck yeah. And, and he rules a kingdom with hundreds of thousands of dollars. He, he's, he's probably a hundred thousand heir. He could be a millionaire. And without these structures, I don't know if those people would, would be able to survive. I don't think their bumper car could even stay in the road. So, when I think about resolutions, it kind of makes me go there. It's like, that would be the perfect way to kind of like, all right, we just need something so people sort of just understand it's time to look back. It's time to tap into Janus. It's time to take that moment and look back over last year and then look forward first year and to reassess and re-engage in all that stuff. And honestly, I find that painful. That makes me want to quit. <laughs> it does. It makes there's a guy on Twitter today. I'm sorry I'm talking so long, but let me just get this out because there's a guy today on Twitter that was like, uh, James, I don't know why you would ask if Joe Rogan mentioned the word Carrie Mullis or not in his interview with Dr. Malone. <laughs> what why does what does that mean he's bad? Does that mean this? Does that mean that? And 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 James, the fact that that he's that he's giving every guest that comes on his show a PCR test that that shouldn't bother you. Why would that bother you? It's not like he's mandating it. I'm sure he's just saying, hey, if you want to come on the show, you know, I need you to take a PCR test. That's not, he's not forcing him. And you start to hear that and you realize, holy fuck, that dude's a woke guy. That dude's awake. What I mean is, is that if you look at the landscape of where we are right now, that dude's like, he's on it. He's like, he's like up there. He's in the upper echelon of where we're at. And that's the stuff that makes me quit because it's like, there's no fucking way I'm ever going to get through to this guy. He needs at least another year and a half of massive trauma <laughs> of like, no, you need to believe in 19 suppositories. That's what, that's what it's going to take for him, that he's going to have to fall for the 19 suppositories that are necessary to cleanse him of this new variant. And 
when I sit on the sidelines and I see that part of me is like, man, just bring it the fuck on. Just, just, bring, <laughs> just bring it on because it's just, I can't. I, and that's when I lose myself in the moment because I don't want to be at the place where I need everyone to be awake. I really want to enjoy the Joe Rogan flowers that are in bloom right now. I really want to enjoy the, the short bus nature of literally everything, everything around, except for the flow state. And who has flow state? The fucking kids on the short bus do. They always, <laughs> it's blowing me away. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. Internet's good, right? Yeah, it's great. Flowing, flowing great. Yeah, well, um, you know, I guess that's why I said not, not, you know, as opposed to a resolution. Uh, and I get what you're saying about that. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's like saying you want to be over there or go there means means you're not there. Um, or I want to have that means you don't have that. Um, so I get that what you're saying about being in a state of lack in, in that way. Still a healthy thing to do though. Like I said, I, I don't well, think that what I'm saying is right is right. It's just what happens to me right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, I think, I think, you know, in terms of like setting goals, um, just for that in itself, it is a, a way, a vehicle, a tool to focus you know your your mind your thought your direction your energy um and that can be a very beneficial thing as opposed to not and just perhaps getting dragged along on some other path but then again that could be your path <laughs> well, that's why a sabbath is important like having that one day right that would be your new year you could look at that as whatever your Sabbath is. And I'm just using that word Sabbath, but you know, to, to take that being self-employed, I, I, I really had to force myself to learn how to adopt that, but I always do better work when I, when I have that. So see, now I'm hypocritically disagreeing with what I just said. It's very well, complex. And that's a, yeah, exactly. It's not like black and white. <laughs> yeah. So as far as thinking about where to go this year, I don't, I don't know what, I think that the mitosis, I just keep picturing what it would be like if, if it wasn't enough and that they needed the mitosis. When I say they, I, I literally do mean that just like there's like an operation Dumbo drop or an operation fishbowl, it's probably not out of the realm of possibility to think there's not an operation humane society for humans operation feral feral humans it just it's just that wouldn't be cruel or even evil that would be exactly what what government would do and so i just picture if if they needed to like continue that program covid's not going to really COVID's going to split you down the middle, but if you still want to refine more, I look at the, the eugenics of refining us even more, and I seriously look at Joe Rogan and I go, ah, that's how they do it. What I mean is, is that just like Disney owns all these different properties like that they have nothing to do with, like Fox and CBS and things like that, it's like uh, uh, installing the... Uh, the, the fences and the archetypes would be the same kind of technique. You know, Disney will not just let you buy the Little Mermaid. There's a certain time where they open a window and they allow the Little Mermaid out to play. It's like a psychic injection is what I'm trying to say. And just like news injects things psychically in the same kind of way, um, I just look at, well, what would be the next mitosis? how would you how would you want to sniff out even more which people are uh are more discerning 
is, is kind of what's their elevation of discernment. And if you were trying to really peel it to see just just how far does that go, I think you'd have to go into patriotism itself. If you needed to take out like 75% of the, and I don't think they have to do that. I'm just making this up. But if you needed to take out 75% of the population and you wanted the, the, the most discerning crop that you could find, I think that COVID would be fucking brilliant. That would sort of give you all of your kind of, I'm going to use the word liberals, but I don't even mean it that way because we all know it's, it's both. But it's just that that first round is pretty easy to get. And you pull that off, but now you want to refine. And so you'd have to kind of climb up the uh, ladder of psyops, sort of like a staircase and say, this is our threshold, right? So you could look at the space program and say, let's, let's make a Mars school. And we're going to set up this, this rocket it doesn't have to go anywhere. And we're going to charge people a <laughs> million dollars to put their head in our guillotine. And, and it would work great because it'd be like, yeah, if you want to go to Mars, show up in this cattle line. I, I mean, show up in this transfer station here and we will take you to the ship and you will get on the ship and you will put on a mask and you will be behind a glass screen the entire time. And we could shake the, the, <laughs> the rocket. We can have it go off. You can call your family as you're rising above the horizon and tell them about the curvature of the earth and they can, they can have the static thing come in. I'm just saying that you could live an entire life inside that Martian colony. And it would literally could be a, a shipping container in like Laszlo, Kentucky. And, and because you believe it, you get what I'm saying, right? I, I hope that I'm not, I don't mean this like, oh, that hypothetical. I literally mean that, that this would not be that, that unfeasible. And if there was ever a problem with the, uh, if Jim Jones ever had a problem, he could just simply, well, we have to exterminate the pod. It didn't work out, right? This pod didn't work. Why? Well, it turns out our shaking machine wasn't, it was making people sick and they weren't buying the whole thing. So we have to rethink that part. Right. So you would be able to discern cut more and more. And what I'm, what I find interesting is just looking around and just picturing where would they cut me? At what point would they get me? And I think about patriotism. I think about countries. I've always said countries aren't what we think they are, but I think it would even be up that high. It would be past those points. And then even then it would, it would be like some sort of dude with a, an emerald uh, staff that turned into a snake or some shit. Like one of those spinny things right now they have that looks like a 3D thing that's floating. Like you, if you were to throw that on the floor, that could spin up and look like a snake. But, but if you didn't understand that technology, you, you wouldn't see that. You, you would just see a fucking snake and go, holy, holy shit, his magic is strong. His magic is better than mine. And maybe even the discernment is, is that you and I figure out, oh my God, I've been in the, I'm in a shipping container. I've been in a shipping container this entire time, right? That we, we would figure that out now. And that the, some kind of Mayan thing, right? Some kind of like, you just disappear. I don't know. I don't know, probably out there, but somebody you say like, something. You mean like we would disappear? Yeah. Like, like, like if we were to, if we were to step out of the shipping container, right? Right. It, it, I would imagine it would probably sort of work like a, a video game or something where that player's gone, right? AFK. Yeah. Away from keyboard. Right. Right. AF, AFB away from body or AFA away from avatar. I don't know. And then when you look at what sleep really is, holy shit, man. Like if sleep is what reality really is, that would make a lot more sense to me. Because when you're growing up, most of your life, you're not actually like walking, doing stuff. You're, you're, you're resting, you're taking it really easy. And then sometimes you get up and you do things and you, and you attempt to learn. You go to school, you go to work, you, for eight hours a day, you're, you're employed at your job, 
but the rest of the time you're recharging from all that work, right? So it would make sense if our dream time was our real reality, but because we have these really twisted, fucked up fetishes with our victimhood, right? With our own power, that if we, if you were just to unleash us and let us be in dream time, we'd end up like in these really fucked up pencil knots where we've tied ourselves into this weird situation and, and, you know, Oh, look, he's flogging himself. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, 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 you know, and just, it, it wouldn't be, you would need that 16 hour reset. Like you'd need that because it's like, no, little, little Billy can really only stay up for eight hours. That's about all he can handle right now. He needs to lay down. He needs to take a nap. Right. And so this is, this is what that is. And it has these really, really simple physical barriers, doesn't it? It has matter. It has, I can't accidentally morph myself into the computer, then all of a sudden reappear, then like break all this shit. Like we have these safety nets, but in the dream time, no, I could move, I could pass my head right through the keyboard and the plasma would, would mix upon itself, right? But, but, but if I, if I was doing that all the time, I'm going to end up really fucking shit up. I'm not even going to know who I am. I'm going to be like half this, half that, half that, and just be all confused. So I need this world to constantly be showing me how things work, how, how I interpret things versus how things I see, all that stuff. That this training, this discernment is absolutely crucial for us to be able to navigate that dream world, that Don Juan world, right? Don Juan a uh, really good, really good read, I think, for everybody, but like any of those kind of stuff, because it's getting you in that animism space again. Are you saying it gives you a, like a framework for your existence? Or, or it, it shows you a, uh, a tangible way to address the, uh, the reality of a, of, a, of a world that's really like a liquid, liquid dream. Like all of this is underwater prana, but because it's so, the prana is so bright, we've had to turn it off, it's too bright. And so now we only interpret things through sight, sight sound, touch, because it, it makes it easier for us to train, right? It's like you blew up those things and put them on your arms, you know? And you've got that now. And you're, you're not diving, you're not gonna understand anything, but you're not gonna drown. It's like that. And then we get to reset each day. Yeah. Yeah, thank God, you know. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of like the New Year kind of reset too. Yeah, no matter where you drive your car, no matter what ditch it's in, no matter how fucked up it is, we, we put this timer on it where you're going to have to shut down in eight hours or in 16 hours. And when you do, your car is automatically going to return to the shop every time. That's a good safety, right? That's a good safety to have. It's interesting too, because, I, and I don't want to jump in if anyone else wants to say something on any of this, just unmute and, and start talking, <laughs> please. But um, when you were talking then too, James, it kind of made me think also about, you know, meta, the metaverse and, and yes, um, the way that that's all heading. Yeah. Josh, just... Uh... Uh, one of our tribe just just posted about that today, right? And uh, I already know how much trouble I'm in for the things that I've already said. But I really do see this meta verse as uh, certainly causing all kinds of great excuses for people to abandon themselves and to lose their sense of I, absolutely no, just. Some of the richest vitriol you will find will be in this metaverse, like seriously deeper, like, holy shit, that's some vitriol. It's like, yeah, well, let me show you this. And it's like even worse. And at the same time, I think you're looking at some maximum, maximum plasma training that's happening in this marionette energy. Same thing you do with roller skates, right? Same thing you do with skis. You extend your presence into the end of your shoes, if you're wearing really thick shoes or, or high heels, you, you've had to extend your plasma into that, that heel, that cushion, or else you just trip everywhere. You, you, you become the presence of that. 
and it's it's a technology that's just touch based that this plugs it in right that as soon as something's touching your body you are plugged into it i am plugged into this shirt i'm plugged into this hat which is why you can touch my shirt and oh i, I feel that i feel that but you're just touching my shirt but i feel it i do try it it's hard because you're using your finger but if you use something else you can actually detect touch on your fabric and you'd be like, well, it's just touching the edge of the edge. I don't think it is. I think that's how you rationally explain this. It's the same way when someone says, this is got the shop, stuff, and And you know exactly what they said. You're like, yeah, no, no, he, he needs a ride and he has to pee. He's drunk. But what he said was, that's what you heard, but you know what happened. Why? Because the air itself is a plug-in device. You plug in over the air. You physically see someone, you interface with their face. You now are connected to their emotions and you're rationalizing it because you're living in this world with your, with your arms all blown up with the cushions in there that you rationalize it and say, well, yeah, that's because I was able to see his lips move or no, it's because he was very clear when he said this is a theft, this is a theft. I, obviously that's what he meant that you would rationalize and tell yourself that when actually it's something much more profound it's much deeper than that this whole mask thing this whole mask thing if you think about it is completely making the people with the masks communicate digitally like digitally you know what i mean I, obviously i don't mean through a computer but but that's a digital interface it, it's literally saying to these people hey we get that this face-to-face -face connection doesn't really work for you right you got the wi-fi on and you're like it won't connect it won't connect i can't connect to humanity i don't know what's wrong with it and and finally someone's just like oh no you just stick a cord in there you're like oh that's better i like this now hey can everyone wear a mask it's it's a different it's a it's a, a binary i should have said binary it's a binary interface, right? Because now you have to hear the words. You, you don't get any telepathy from them. And that's more like the law. That's more like legal stuff. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Like legally, the legalese of it is very, the, the wrong person could be legally right, even though it's so clearly obvious that this is wrong. It's because it's the binary uh, transition. that It's being interpreted that way. I wondered, you know, um, with the whole mask thing as well, because we look, we look so, we use our, our eyes so much to read someone's energy, like on their face and their facial expression and all of that. And all of a sudden, you know, you've just, you're just seeing this. Um, and so then you like looking more at the, trying to look, read the expression in the eyes as opposed to the, and, um, and yeah, and so I wondered about that, if that actually might help people to tap into their other senses more, you know, to kind of sense, sense people rather than just using this perception. That's really brilliant. And, and Japanese emoji are more eye focused and American emoji are more mouth focused. Right. And that should tell you that the masking is is asking everyone's vibration to rise, to, to move up, to say stop, stop edible. No, no, no more edible communication, telepathic communication, like no more face yeah, yeah. or telepathy, more yeah. I rationalize what your expression could mean because of I'm internalizing whether it's good or bad. It's binary. It's, it's, it's much, in a society as, as brutal as Japan is, it, it, should, it should tell you something that their emoticons are more about the eyes. Yeah, even in their cartoons and everything too. It's like the little- Yeah, you know, yeah, animation. yeah, the anime, the entire anime style, right? Which is, yeah. which is, fascinating because what's the fashion of america is that anime style right that's the fashion that america is attracted to right now that's the fashion that the masks are invoking too so it's 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 sort of putting you in line with where the japanese have been the whole time 
which one is of the, not for communication. Hey, August, go ahead. One of the most popular, I'm in Japan, right? So one of the most popular, and it's not an animation, it's a little character called uh, Hello Kitty. It's this little cat. Yeah. And uh, maybe you know Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty doesn't even have a mouth. She, they don't even draw it, right? The eyes are really big and uh, there doesn't seem to be a mouth. But the designer of it, it's like, it's from the seventies or something, but the, they were talking to the lady that drew it and it's like, why doesn't she have a mouth? You know, that's like, she's uh, unempowered because she, and she says, no, 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 she's got a mouth, but you just can't see it. But it's all about the eyes and it's, uh, yeah, no mouth. But um, I don't know if that's, I don't know, maybe that's true what you said, James, about uh, the mask making us raise our thing to work more with the eyes and the, instead of the, the sort of oral kind of thing. But um, like, I love how you, you always take the, the flip everything about what's good and what's bad. You know, the other day about Socrates, you know, I thought Socrates is the man and, you know, suddenly you throw him on the, under the bus. But yeah. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, then you think about that and it's like, yeah, okay, it's true. It's probably, you know, like, why do we all think about Socrates? It's because, um, you know, that's what we're being taught, you know, and it's like history, and it's like, okay, Socrates is the guy, Plato, you know, truth. You say in like truth is, uh, what is it? You got into trouble about that too. Truth is, um, um, it's, there's no, none of these, um, well, I, I can't think of the words, like the, there is truth, but you're saying no, truth is um, obje uh, subjective. Everybody's yeah, good. Or like fractal. It, it, <clears throat> yeah, it's like, I, I say the truth can't be objective because it's fractal. I actually can't say the word subjective. Right. The reason why I don't say that is because I'm under the impression that if you were to spin up at 78 hertz and I was to spin up at 78 hertz and, and then look at the world, that both of us would in fact agree completely on what we see. So in a way it, it's fractal, not really subjective because you can dial that. And, and, and that's what we do in Dojo is we compassionate. What we really do by compassionating is look at our opponent and say, oh, they're, they're, they look like they're maybe down here to 66 Hertz, for example. And you go down there because you just want to agree. That's all. Right. You just want to agree because you know that if you can come down there and reach them, they are going to pretty much follow you unless they're happy where they're at. Right. So which one of you is happier where you're you, where you want to go with your vibration tends to lead that dance, tends to lead that prana economy. So the way to elevate someone is is to literally dial yourself into them. Donald Trump does this. That's why he, he talked about the wall, because he needed to be the one that wanted the safety of our borders more than anyone else. That's the only reason why he was like, it has to be a 40 foot tall wall. And, and, and we could be paranoid and we should. I have no, no beef with this, but we could be worried, I should say, and say, oh, he, the whole time they secretly wanted to build a wall around the country. And my, my thought has always been, no, no, that literally is just the psychic prop that that gained traction that allowed donald trump to be the leader of the passion right that that the passion is going to be dressed in if the fashion is uh uh a jumpsuit and and uh a6 running shoes and and and, and hairspray then that's what he would he would have it, it this is why you have to be evacuated to be on the pedestal it's because the pedestal has to be mutable. It's going to have to change. And you would be willing, you're simply as the surfers, just trying to go wherever that wave tells you to go. It's, there's really no power. Donald Trump really only has power um, in the sense of, of, of once the room tells him what he needs to be, only then can he go into the room and start to sway the dance. He can't dictate, we're going to do the conga now. He can't do that. He, he will never, ever be able to do that. But if the dance is the conga, if he's effective as a leader, he can steer that when he can and take it somewhere else. But he's very, very much uh, more brutally 
uh, a slave to the fashion of it all, which is why these people are so vapid. Like Joe Rogan, I'm not even criticizing him. I'm saying that in order for him to be as successful as he was, he would have to be this beautiful. There's just, there's just no way, no way to be up that high without doing that. It's actually the art of being successful. But so that's um, you know, you're talking about a political setup, like where there's a leader and influence or whatever, and then the, the others follow, or this person goes to the frequency of the of the group. Mm -hmm. What I like about your Iroquois um, convention thing, it's where there's no leader per se. Right. Where, you know, we all got to sit around the fire and talk about it, and you know find a frequency that i don't know how, how it actually works i was wondering about that with the with your crypto thing was you could just have someone come in and say no 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 to everything and your whole thing if it's you'd have to keep changing it or what well that's kind of like how the dojo works um although not everybody really understands that but the consensus uh if if i'm able to establish this DAO as a unanimous government consensus then just by the nature of it being unanimous consent it would be possible for everyone to unanimously decide one day we want a dictator that's what caesar that's what happened with caesar before caesar it was it was different it, it that actually caesar didn't like i need you guys to fucking follow me that's not what happened at all that's not what happened at all it was hey caesar will you take over and he's like yeah okay i'll do that it, that's how it happened and 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 all of our fashion leaders are the same way. They didn't come take the reins. We were, we were, we were hiring. We were hiring for that position. And we do that every day. We're hiring for that position of Elon Musk right now. We're hiring for that. And that position is filled, but we could replace him at any time. If someone wants to come along better and be more of the Tony Stark, then that person might get the job, right? Same with president, same with our fashion, skinny jeans same with everything that you're seeing in culture same with music all of it you know so what should take then um back to plato like him say you know democracy is no good mm -hmm. but what you need is a uh, the philosopher king yep so would you say that elon musk is our philosopher king at the moment or you know whoever that is is that does that work or you got you've got to take on that that's totally opposite again. I, I believe that the philosopher kings are are John Galt. I, I don't think that they're visible people. I think that because they 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 are so manifested in themselves that they would never be caught with an identity or being responsible for anything. That the purest, rawest form of raw magic would be the, the hermit on the hill that guides everyone, but no one ever sees him. The entire time they thought that lantern was just a star in the sky. That to me would be like a really expert kick-ass uh, hermetical leader. And so what you're looking at more is just the hyena parade. And the hyena parade is very effective. It Nothing does the dirty work better than having us choose our own hyenas and then try and survive them. It's like some of the best self-taught vitriol in the world. It's literally is like, is like there's a master chemist that knows, oh, I need to add the green dragon vitriol to this mixture right now because the acid will eat itself. That I don't have to do shit. I don't have to stir. I don't have to do nothing. All I have to do is pour this in and just walk away and that really is the best alchemical solution for this. This will ferment, it will dilute, it will dissolve, it will solidify, it will calcify. I'm, I know I'm not getting this right, but it will go through all these steps. And then at the very end, we will have something, uh, something that we can call gold. That that's what's happening. And that's why I find it so arrogant that most of the objective reality folks are implying that God is A, a poor judge of character, be a fucking idiot who can't get shit right and C can't even run a fucking world like everything's fucking broken that kind of retardation is everywhere that's like rampant that's that's how it is and and there's no way that people are going to joe rogan themselves out of that 
<laughs> that kind of mixture, I think, is necessary for the bubbling process to 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 clean all this off. You know, the the, the end result. What I'm trying to say is the end result is probably like three percent of us. I don't think that I'm in that three percent. By the way, I'm just saying that the end result is probably more like a three percent. And those three percent, those dudes are like fucking lit like you're in the room with them and you're just like you're completely moved by their presence because of how deep flow state they're in you know maybe you know we all got flaws but like i think you you did degrade yourself a bit a bit much here like you know being a bit humble there it's um yeah no you're well keep in mind i have a social security number huh i uh, keep in mind i have a social security number I've been, uh, I, I, uh, I missing part of my genitals. I have 77 vaccines in my system. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't mean that to denigrate. I'm saying that, that I have to picture that this world has, has, has creatures in it that, that haven't been exposed to having a name. Uh, uh, I'm not saying they don't have a name, but, but their name is more like, Francisco Dranconio, it's just weird like birds and shit fly when he says his name. Why? Because the vibration is just on such a different fundamental level that, that if I was to be around that person, I would either get super angry or super upset or completely collapse on myself because of just the sheer egoic field from that person's heart. So I don't mean that to even denigrate. I'm just saying that I picture what an actualized, you know, body, right. like fully, you know, like the Ubermensch. And then I picture that Ubermensch having kids. And then I picture those Ubermenchers having more kids. And then those guys fucking each other. And then you're just looking at this super race of just like really lit people. And you would think that, that the more lit they would be, the less any of us would ever see them right? The less any of us would ever interact with them is what I'm trying to say. These are the people that, that run the ranch from the very top floor. They're not going to be out where just any weird cow can come up to them and start fucking with them. You know, that that's for the rancher hands. That's for the, you know, the other kind, that's kind of what I mean. I, I, I think I'm a pretty sharp cow, like a really sharp cow is what I think. And I think that that I'm kind of uh, sort of like enjoy being on the ranch and also enjoy that I can kind of bitch about being on the ranch too. It's like a real, if, if I really analyze myself, I fluctuate where I'm at. You're and never going to be one of them. You're never going to be one of those cows that are in the container in Kentucky going to Mars. Huh? I, it, we could be that right now though. It could be that that's where we are right now. And, and I think that if we just embrace that, it, it actually liberates us more because it keeps us out of knowing. It keeps us from being petrified because we're just always in flow state. Like any of this could change. The veil could open right now. I don't even know if I can actualize that. It's just that, that that's what it feels like. If, if I was more maybe successful Maybe what I mean by success was more about if I was more autonomous, I think I might, I might feel less like a cow, but I'm still really, really locked into this world. Uh, the constraints that it, that it gives me, I, I'm, I'm nowhere in Uber Minchie is what I mean. And, and I, I it's kind of cool though, because I, I just see how how much potential we have. Fuck, I mean we. That's what it's all about, though. I think like, just to see the potential, like yeah. your the resolutions or whatever it was you started to talk when, when the thing started. We we're talking, um, you know, something about belief and being in the flow state at the same time. Like if you have the belief, and you're in flow in some kind of a flow state. Like it's not about wishing and wanting and needing yeah. and stuff, but it's just like, you know, this is good, and yeah. then. You know, if you believe that it's good, it just it escalates. It just seems to snow yeah. like snowball. And that's stuff. why that's why I'm always trying to alchemize the world around me. I look for the most painful part of the world around me, 
and go, can I alchemize that at all? Is, is there any potential for me to gain power by, by just alchemizing how I'm looking at this thing, right? Like the metaverse. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a way to alchemize that? I don't know. Is there a way to alchemize crypto? Is there a way to alchemize the pyramid? The eye in the pyramid itself. Like, alchemize Lucifer, the label Lucifer. Like, all the things that happen, look for the worst thing that you can find and just not even like I have to solve it, but just with a with a natural curiosity go, I wonder if I could alchemize that. And then you just start to walk around it and you're just like, huh. And it's not, you, you can go, your mom can call you for dinner and you can be like, yeah, I'll come back and alchemize it tomorrow, right? That's what I want. That kind of flow state, you know, where it's just a, a prop that's in the yard that I, I can come back tomorrow. It, it'll still be here. I think that's where most of the magic is. Most of the most of what I consider a success is because I've come to a realization through the al alchemization of something. And I physically feel the energetic response to that because suddenly I gain power when I see that. When I heard the word narcissist, I used to lose power when I see that because it used to empower me to try and heal from my wife because I could call her that. But it wasn't actually like truly helping. It was sustaining. It was like a tourniquet. But fuck, man, I want to move this leg some more. So, you know, how can I alchemize this? How can I alchemize this? And I really started to look at that term. And, and when you're watching someone dog on a narcissist, you're really watching someone really cruel that has full excuse just to denigrate and demonize the fuck out of that person. And if you really look at it that way, you can see, wow, what? that's some clever energy work there. <laughs> that they're saying... I'm such a victim of this person as they're like setting them on fire and pouring gasoline. You know, it's like brilliant. That, that's why, that's why I see so much potential in this because we're so brilliant when it comes to energy, right? Like rationally we're fucking retarded, but when it comes to our energy and what we actually want, it's just stunning how smart we are. It's stunning. The, the, the intricate plots that we do to, to Elizabeth Holmes is a perfect example of that. The, intricate plots that she was able to do to cause that that kind of motor to form it's just who's elizabeth Holmes? she's a lady from theranos that uh convinced nine billion dollars and she was going to do some blood thing i was going to do an episode about it today but uh the internet uh craft crapped out so i actually have the episode now but um I'm, i haven't gotten it uploaded yet i ran out of time so Funny you mentioned about that John Galt because that just it's almost like the exact uh, story of my interaction with my neighbor who I had a disagreement with. He named his property company uh, John Galt LLC. <laughs> kind of gave me a big clue. I'm like, well, this guy, you know, I might as well treat him as somebody who seems like fucking with people as a hobby, you know. And so the way it worked out was he had, he had poured this uh, concrete when my mother-in-law was living here and didn't admit to it. But then, uh, well, he didn't admit to this damage from the, his tenant's uh, swimming pool that drained and put a big rut in it. So he had some guy just back up and pour some concrete. So I called him, my one interaction, and now he's like from far. Like, you know, I, I just happened to like, find out in some big estate where he lives out in the country and some businesses that he owns but i can't like uh you know he'll be he's out of reach now that we've had a disagreement but you know he tried to it's just the weird way that the reality works because while while i'm dealing with him i have this big long driveway and you know it's kind of steep and uh i called him up and i said well what do you think about that uh you know, I go, I, was, I, don't, I don't really want a concrete driveway, especially not one that, that ruined the grade. And then he suggested we do a curb cut and he would split the cost. And I'm like, I think I'll, I think I'm pretty much sure that I'll be in charge of the driveway now. And then I find out he's advertised that driveway as his driveway for that neighboring property because it's right in between the properties, you know, which, which is fraud in itself right there. But, uh, Anyway, so I, I rejected that. And so then I'm out there 
over these last couple of years with this demolition hammer and various tools that I broke, like cracking up this concrete. I used some of it for my hula gardens, you know, but I didn't, some of the pieces are kind of big and I, I had them lined in the driveway. Well, then I find out, I find out that underneath the driveway, there's like four inches of compacted gravel and then some black top. And then underneath all that is the cool original paving stone driveway. And so then I, I'm just out there like an archeologist for like the last year, just, you know, with this huge, you know, it looks like I'm excavating some archeological site. And so he didn't even damage shit because it just turns out he actually did me a favor because he gave me a reason to dig that up. And then, and then my other neighbor, they changed their drainage ditch with these big quartz rocks, uh, which would have like totally flooded my driveway. And then, so I used that concrete that I broke up to create my own rock drainage ditch, which uh, just diverted the, the water like right around my property. So it never even, you know, I didn't, I just didn't want all that water, you know, but I'm just saying totally transmuted the vitriol into, into a multifaceted thing that worked out. And he was a total John Galt, like he lived up, he lived up to his, that character, you know, and he provided this cool, role for me to kind of address in, in real life as if I was in some virtual reality and playing a game. I feel like I played a, a video game. So how different is that from the metaverse when you can sum up your real life interactions that way and it seems very uh, uh, video game like to me, you know, I'm not even a video game player, but you know, just what I imagine it's like to immerse yourself in one. And if you think about the mentality of someone that that doesn't see a difference if they're wearing a mask or not, the metaverse would would be a really good training tool for them. Like it, it would be the only way that you could even get them to think about uh, animism. You know, it, I, it's a, that I thing you were talking about. I really, you know, at the co-op, all the you know, I'm familiar with all the employees there since. Lori works there and they had masks the whole time. And then on like Christmas, they finally, after all this time, lifted the mask mandate, but then the employees still wore the mask. But like, I noticed that interactions were much more peripheral where you might not even make eye contact. So it's actually like a completely different kind of an interaction, you know, and maybe it's partly a personal thing where I, I tend to like avoid eye contact where I just feel like I'm I always feel like I'm staring at somebody if I if I look at them in their eyes for but then now there's no other choice and so yeah. now it's commonplace where you're making this deep like eye contact connection I actually kind of like it myself Maybe yeah I can see how you know. how it would make everyone have to kind of be at attention more yeah it's a different kind of I mean I don't like you're, you're having to watch you're having to stalk the entire time you know? but yeah. I like having a reason to like that you're gonna like, you're gonna be looking at each other in the eye. I mean, that's gonna be your interaction for pretty much anything when you're in that, you know? And then now that they lifted that mandate and then people are still there, like I'm still like maybe a lot of times the only person not wearing a, a mask in there, you know? So then it's somehow weird. Like I feel, I don't know. It's just, I think that they like it. I think a lot of the people that have to deal with the customer service type people like being in the mask and people have some elaborate eye makeup styles that they yeah. now do. So I don't know, I'm just noticing the body language is different, like yeah. freer maybe, people like feel less inhibited. Like I notice people are a little more freer and not so tense in their body language sometimes, you know? Yeah, you like, know, and f and I'm sorry. Yeah, for, for I'm some sorry. some people, uh, it's you know, it's a, it's an opportunity to hone their skills a bit more and other senses to connect more. But then there's other people that use that as an excuse to just connect even less. <laughs> you know, like okay, now I've got a mask on, like I'm just not even gonna, you know, <laughs> interact with you at all. But mm -hmm. um, Noam, you had your hand up. Not that you have to have your hand up here, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, I just didn't want to interrupt the flow. Uh, yeah. But um, so when we talk about the multiverse, um, I have played uh, some games, some video games where I was involved with different sizes of communities over different periods of time. Like one of them 
uh, over a couple of years. Uh, and one of the things that I think will be interesting for me to see with how the uh, metaverse thingy kind of starts to shake out is the notion of anonymity, anonymity like that you're on, like at least most people perceive that they're sort of can be anonymous online, especially in games. A lot of people perceive that. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like, where James has talked about the notion of atheism as that way of having privacy uh, versus the idea of a god, is almost what like that perceived anonymity through the internet is to like that religion of science. Like it is that playground where you can sort of be anonymous. And when you think about the whole social credit systems and how those could get tied into aspects of metaverse and that kind of thing, it could be the complete opposite where you suddenly have no anonymity to anything that you do uh in the metaverse and i think that could dramatically change how people interact and so i i just i've seen so many interesting things happen from people having that perceived anonymity um that i think that's going to be an interesting factor of how that metaverse is expressed how people interact with it yeah yeah like when youtube first started you know you'd read the comments and it'd be like fuck you you fuck 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 you know it was like total free reign and uh, hmm. YouTube kept like putting filters and putting filters and censoring and, and really, really Facebook really solved that simply by, by giving your identity a reputation, so to speak, that because you had a name associated with you, it just eventually became expensive. But the whole time while I was, that was happening, I was really wishing that, that, that they would allow the, the fuck fuck stuff just to thrive because it's a to me it's a pure faster form of vitriol and i wish that the meta had the same thing with anonymity that i think the anonymity would lead to a lot of insane behavior like a lot and it would be nuts and it would be totally not something you'd want to live in and i think that it would it would get us so much closer <laughs> if we would just do that it's kind of like taking a dog to a dog park and you know that that dog has some serious nervous energy, but you also know that if you just let that dog down in that dog park, that it's going to work out, that the pack is going to regulate and that that dog is going to be able to adjust. Not all the time, but, but if you, it's the same kind of a thing versus taking the dog that's nervous into the dog park and keeping him on the leash the whole time. Because now he's like nervous as fuck. He doesn't have his own autonomy. He can't run away. He can't do anything. So he's even more terrified. And the process takes even longer for him to normalize because he doesn't feel that he has the freedom to express himself, i.e. to regulate, which is why I think if we could just unleash each other in that and even enjoy that fuck, fuck, fuck phase, just like, wow, that's pretty interesting, Tom, that that would even be good work for you to be able to dive into that mosh pit and go, wow, this guy's really angry right now. And for you just to learn how to regulate with that. Like th that's a really good dojo work is what I'm saying. But we've stifled that by making it, no, we have to make sure everyone's polite. And so the, the whole reputation thing, you know, is going. I, I don't see a, a realm where the meta will ever be have anonymity i'm talking about the corporate meta i just don't see that ever them ever letting that happen which sucks when i say them i'm just talking about the company meta it, the companies that are running this they're gonna they're gonna want your identity tied with it the internet computer project is a, a token project right now it's a, a token you can buy but the internet computer is a uh um it's a token that actually has a machine language built inside of it. And the idea is that every single thing on the internet could be inside of this internet computer. And the entire thing would be a computerized, tokenized world. And that the meta itself would only be able to exist. This is what the people who write this token think. The only way the meta verse would ever be able to exist is inside this sort of living machine language that the uh, ICP uh, adopts. And the ICP was actually the only token ever to come out of the World Economic Forum. It's like a 
legit technology. It has some of the most highest numbers of financial backers to it. It's a globalist kind of a thing. And one of the things that makes it so different than any other token, because Bitcoin is anonymous, meaning that it, it has no, no link to your identity. The ICP is the only token that actually <laughs> is linked to your identity, that, that the, your identity itself is, is at the intrinsic heart of how this entire system would work. So I, I, this is, I think, why companies like XRP are under SEC investigation. This is why uh, Monero is not allowed to be traded on certain public exchanges. It, it's, it's the push away from the anonymity and into the uh, identity uh, business, which is the reputation business, which is, which is all that, which is the Japanese way of don't speak, but look and always watch everyone. Watch everyone, watch everyone. That's your input. When you have a mask on, your input is watching everyone, right? You have to watch because you will miss. You will miss if you're not watching everyone because everything is silent now. So it takes you out of that mode, that flow state so much. If you think about what that means that you're constantly now having to watch everything. It's a vitriol coming, man. I mean, it's been here, but some good vitriol. Um, can I say something? Yeah, please. Um, yeah, what you said reminded me of a dream I had. Um, like, I had this dream about four years or two years before COVID. And um, in the and I won't go into the whole dream, but in the dream, at the end of the dream this man was in my dream and he, he looked at me and he said, and there were these people, all of these people standing outside of my window, just like all of the, like a, a crowd of people. And he said, um, don't worry, they won't be able to see the light. And then I woke up. And then when the masking and all of this started hitting, parts of that dream started to resonate with me because like what you said, like when I go out and I'm around people that are in a mask, they can't, it's like they can't see me, but I can see them. Even though like what Catherine was saying, their vision should be heightened. It's almost having like the opposite effect. And then sometimes I wonder, you know, well, what am I masking? Like, is there, is there a whole other group of people out there in the grocery store that I can't see? You know, like I always think about that sort of thing. And um, kind of what you were saying at the beginning I have, I have like a really intense dream life. And um, sometimes I feel like the opposite of what you said, like my daytime is me charging myself to get ready for my dream state. Like it's like the opposite. And I feel like when I'm tapping into like to flow or, or serendipities in my waking life, it's actually me tapping into my dream state life. Anyway, it's all kind of feels like a lot of that has started merging together in a way since the COVID mayhem. Yeah, I, I think we actually mean that the same way, by the way. The idea is, is that you don't actually go to work for eight hours a day. You're, you're actually off work for 16 hours a day, but eight of those hours you happen to be asleep, but eight of those hours you're actually working, right? So it's, it's still the exact same thing, but it's the opposite. So we we shut down when we wake up because we're not on the clock, right? But as soon as we go to bed, it's time to punch in, right? It's fucking go time, right? And then after that, now you're back in the world where you don't accidentally morph your head into the middle of a computer and then all of a sudden, you know, rematerialize shit like that. You don't have to worry about that stuff. You know, everything's got a nice safety buffer to it. Yeah, we used to say that when we're sleeping, that's when we were doing our work, like your energy work and, you know, you're free from the body and, you know, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Like if we were, if we were truly psychic piloelectric beings, and I think we are, and we truly could not handle how much power we had, but we wanted to slowly get better at it, this would be the perfect way. <laughs> Like this is like the fucking perfect way to do that, the, to slowly 
uh, come up with a, an identity, like a name, to suddenly link up to something called a last name. So now we've linked with our ancestors. Imagine not really understanding who your ancestors were until you have a last name. Like that would be a really good hook is what I'm trying to say. And people used to not have last names. So the birth of the last name was literally the psychic link that you and I said to, I want to connect to my ancestors. That's what it means. And that if you were to picture that as we got better, that one day our name would be like the fucking Bible. What's your name? <clears throat> Adam beget Tom beget Jane beget Bob beget Doug beget Ranch beget, you know, and you just go, that's your name. And you would know if you could recite your name, it would, it would show you how powerful your hard drive is to link into your ancestors because you'd be able to recite all those people, right? So you could even look now at your field. How far back can you look in your ancestors? That's how much DNA memory, plasma memory that your ancestral line has, which is why you can see further back. But someone like me maybe can't, you know, I can only see one or two generations or whatever. So all of these things are more symbolic than we think. We purposely try and trivialize them because we don't want to really think about all that weight that we have to pick up as soon as we punch in when we go to sleep. Because then all those things are profound and they mean something. So that's your last name, that's your name, that's your social security number, all those things. Now you have a credit score. All those things are energetic reputation and pride, aren't they? And you could look at a world where we didn't have pride, where we loved our victimhood, we loved our slavery, where we wanted to be sharecroppers because it literally paid us. It allowed us to survive through the winter and that we needed someone to poke us into a reputational pride sense. And then we fought back on it. Oh, but ego is bad, all that stuff. You, you could just see all this unwrapping this way. And when you start to unwrap it this way, there's no more shedding because you're looking at a perfect system. My God, it's perfect. Like it's perfect this way, if you think about it this way. And we're painting now. We didn't used to be able to paint. We used to only be able to paint maybe in okra, right? Maybe we only had one or two colors, but now we're painting in just 256 million, you know, 56 million colors. That's amazing. And all of us can recognize those paints when maybe before we couldn't. Music, we used to have maybe three notes, you know, it's like, no, gut string make low G. You know, that was that was it. That was what we had. And, and we got intricate. Now we have chromatic scales. Now we're talking to each other in like augmented fifths. And we're like, holy shit, did you just say augmented fifth? And it's like, yes, me discover augmented fifth now when it used to be noise. And augmented fifth used to be just fucking noise. And all of a sudden it has this deep rhythmic kind of romance to it. It's like Darth Vader slow dancing. It's like the weirdest fucking sound ever. But we know that now. We're tuned into that now because our fidelity is increasing, not decreasing. So this whole world is evil. Why the fuck is our fidelity getting better, not worse? Why are we gaining access to our ancestors, not losing it? Why do we even have a concept of a family? If this was truly about enslavement, I would wake up and go, my mother is machine that give me pellets. She my mommy. That's, that's what it would be like. And it would be so easy. It would be so fucking easy. But it's not that way. It's literally the exact opposite. I was not stupid enough like my father was to fall for the Vietnam War. I wasn't. I mean, actually, I enrolled. So, okay, maybe I, I was. I just got lucky. But we're learning. I'm learning. It's progress. It's not digress, you know. Congress. Yeah, it's progress, not Congress. Holy shit, Congress. It's literally the opposite of progress. That is so fucked up, y'all. Okay. That is so fucked up. It's so fucked up. It's right there. It's just like, oh, yeah. no one look at the gonad. Don't see it. Don't see it. Have you read, James, the book, uh, Chester, G.K. Chesterton book, uh, The Man Who Was Thirsty? Are you familiar with that? No. Well, it's it's... It's a book about a, a mob led by Mr. Sunday. And so this guy tries to infiltrate the mob and he, he's able to do it and he becomes Mr. Thursday. So Mr. Sunday has these six henchmen. And as he gets in, there's, there's one for each day of the week. And then as they slowly start to become aware of each other, 
Mr. Thursday realizes that Mr. Tuesday is also an infiltrator trying to do good. And ultimately, the ultimate end is that Mr. Sunday is actually God and the whole, all of these people are infiltrating to try to do good into this evil mob, but the evil mob is Mr. Sunday, who is God, who is doing that to teach them, you know, teach us how to stand up, like, just like you're talking about. It's a really interesting book. A, 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 uh, the, wait a minute. A, a new it, sip, the great seal says, Anuit Septus, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, let me show you this. Google Chrome, uh, share. Oh, it won't let me share. But um, uh, it, it, on the Great Seal, it says Anuit, C-O-E-P-T-I-S. And the Hi. literal trans translation is is god has shown us favor god favors our undertaking god favors our undertaking is what it says and then try, underneath it new world order right try sharing again um might have just been a setting on here there you go so i knew it quapped it sorry i don't i just don't have to say that <laughs> but God has given as favored us creating these stairs, us creating these 1776, us creating this unfinished pyramid, not finished, unfinished pyramid. And that this brings us a new order for the ages. And if you've eliminated all of your victimhood, then you have to alchemize the great seal. You have to. And so you're looking at the great seal and you're staring at the eye of providence and you're like, how is this helpful? How is this helping me? And that's really when you start to anonymity is the lack of the great seal to be anonymous, to be atheist, right? To live in a vacuum is to have no witness and that no witness would give you liberation to explore just how evil you could be or how sinister you could be or how defile you could be all that stuff it's only when you introduce an a witness to the scene now what is consciousness this is what's so fucking fascinating what is consciousness it's just fucking witness that neurologically you get enough neurological agencies that formulate enough levels on top of levels on top of levels that you start to manifest what you and I call consciousness, which literally would just simply be the ability to stock your neuro agencies responses. That really all your, your identity, if you really think about it, your identity is the awareness behind the neurological systems that you're just watching run that if you truly step back and watch, you are the awareness. This is what Eckhart Tolle talks about, right? You are the awareness behind that. You are the consciousness, that's it. You're not even the person. You're the consciousness behind that person. That is this symbol. This is the symbol for consciousness. This is, this is giving consciousness to what? The fucking pyramid. Guys, a 3D engine, a 3D engine is nothing but a bunch of fucking triangles. This is the definition of a 3D engine. You are rendering triangles. The first thing you do when you build a game is you put triangles on the screen and you make those triangles so accurate that when someone watches those triangles, they are fully immersed. And when you immerse someone inside your triangles, you are giving your triangle consciousness. You are making your triangle so enticing that someone puts their eye 
inside your fucking triangle. They give it consciousness. They submit consciousness to it. That is fucking amazing because you see that the simulation itself is not a simulation. No, 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 no. Holy fuck, no. It's so much more profound than this because we're literally creating life. We're literally creating life by drawing triangles in the invisible fucking ether <laughs> and putting consciousness inside it. And that what you're looking at the meta is this very, very base root. And that it would be very easy to imagine that this world itself could be pollinated, not with the nutrients of the earth, but with your consciousness. And that if you were to truly reach the uber mensch, if you were truly to come to power with who you are, the omniscient, omnipresent being you are, you would understand that you, all you need to do to create life is draw a really pretty triangle and give it consciousness. And that triangle has to be covered on every side. No matter where you look at it, it's always got a triangle. There's no holes in it. That makes the illusion feel more real. And if, if the illusion feels more real, then all of us will look at the triangle and go, well, yeah, that, that looks like a dog. That looks like a dog. Look, it's even moving like a dog. And that what we're looking at is are we're rudimentarily trying to start an engine. That when you and I all agree, oh, hello, kitty. That looks like, a, oh, that's, that's a kitty. That's a kitty. That's a kitty. What we're all doing is we're... <laughs> We're slowly starting an engine called Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty's not alive yet. We can't get it to turn over, but we can get gas in the chamber. All of us can recognize it. It has a throttle. It has a brake. Every one of us agrees. We just can't get it to live yet, but we will. We will. And I get that that's the terrifying part. It's like, oh, you're worshiping God. Oh, you're blah, blah, blah. But, but that's why would... Why the fuck would it not work that way? What is a child? Holy fuck, man. What is a child but a triangle that came out of your Stargate that had so much love and consciousness imbued in it by you and by the dad and whoever else around it that every single person agreed, that's not only a Hello Kitty, that thing's a fucking child. It's related to you. Its name's Molly. It's going to have a favorite color. That's what you're doing. You're putting the eye in the pyramid. So that symbol that great seal isn't a bad thing. This symbol's giving you the actual tricks. It's showing you the spell book. It's telling you, here's how you do it, buddy. This is how you get there. You need a yellow brick road. And how are you gonna make the mule go down the yellow brick road? You're gonna have to beat his ass. You're gonna have to make it, you, no pun intended. I'm gonna take it, it was a beautiful pun. You're gonna have to beat his ass. You're gonna have to beat the mule's ass. You're gonna have to give it vitriol because otherwise it'll just sit there at the bottom of the pyramid going, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. That's what lies are. If you think about what lies are, it's just deep, deep fucking slash from, the, from a fucking cattail, isn't it? When you found out you've been lied to, that's what it feels like. It feels like a fucking cattail and you instantly want to move because you want to get out of the lie. You're like, oh, fuck, get me the fuck out of here. That is you moving up the pyramid. Level one. Level one. Is red and blue is bullshit. That's level one. The second level, right? The dichotomy of it all. The dichotomy is bullshit. Level two. Uh, libertarianism. Right? Well, maybe that's bullshit. So now you're, you don't have two levels. Now you got three or four. And then you're start on up these levels, however you want to look at it. Virology, special relativity, psychology, economics. There is no inflation. 19 box cutters. All of these things are getting you higher and higher to the top in a voluntary way. It's not forcing it. It's simply making it so uncomfortable that if you're aware of it, you would find it untenable and you would raise yourself up. That's that brilliance of the alchemy of like, oh, I'm just going to let this sit. I don't have to stir it. I don't have to do anything. This thing sorts itself out because as these yeasts 
or, or spitting in the vitriol. They're like, I don't like the hyena I'm going to raise. And now you're the yeast is higher. And it's like, oh, I like this. I'm fine. Or no, this still doesn't do it. I need to raise up higher and higher. There's, there's your pyramid. And so the entire time, these Freemasons that are trying to enslave us are, are doing something that they know is painful, that they know you will hate, and that they're fucking telling you, hey, hey, just so you guys know, we are under the impression of Anuit Septus, that God has shown favor on this endeavor. And that would be the entire definition of Satan, the most trusted, the one who's hated the most, the adversary, the Satan, the Shaitan, the adversary, the Freemason, Freemason, that all that would make sense. And the Freemason is embracing that by going, yes, I want you to hate me because I can fucking take it. Why? Because I am sensei, bitch. I am sensei here in this world, says the Freemason. Or I am senpai, whichever. I am here to assist the dojo. And so I'm going to tell you about NASA and your kids are going to believe. And you're going to, you're going to buy a $500 fake flamethrower from Elon Musk because he told you that he was going to revolutionize the building industry, traffic, uh, AI. He's going to colonize Mars. He was going to save the environment. And you believed him. So we have to have some kind of way to make that expensive there's the lie. There's the pain. Now your ass is moving again. Your ass is moving again. And the metaverse will do the same thing. Holy fuck. A serious vitriol just waiting. But it's here anyway. Like a fucking COVID. We're sticking each other with needles. God damn, man. Fuck, right? And that's so obvious. Like it's so obvious now. The 78 fucking needles. It's so obvious, right? It's not going to be as obvious in the future. It'll, it'll be that much more subtle, that much harder to see. The things that we're falling for now, all of us, we're fucking retards compared to the next generation of truthers that are looking back on us going, God, man, this fucking had no idea about this. You know, those guys think they need lungs to breathe or something. It could be something really obvious like that. We just don't know yet. When you alchemize that, You don't, you can't help but just have more energy. When you see the world that way, you just can't help but have more energy. And guess what? I have more energy, but now I trust less. So what I mean is, is that this isn't even something that's like making me into more of a slave. If anything, it's making me more of an outcast. My liberation is making me more of an outcast. That's what makes it harder, which is why I think it's initiation ritual. This would never work if the people that were learning the truth were constantly being rewarded. It would never work that way. It would never fucking work that way. Because everyone would simply just go for the reward, right? Where we are at has to be painful because it's the only reason why we had enough spunk to, to pull that levity to rise ourselves up, which means that we have to constantly be watching ourselves looking for more energy it becomes necessary for us to survive. We are not capable, my friends. I love you all, but none of you are capable of surviving as long as a sheep can. I'm just saying that you just require more energy now. Your awareness of the world, you know I'm right. Your awareness just requires more calories. It's just, you're a more complex organism. Your brain is burning more calories than, than your largest muscle in your ass you can't get by with the neanderthal tactics anymore of i know that i will poop corn so i don't have to hunt because there will be corn in my poop tonight you can't function that way you can't you initiated yourself out of it now you're fucked because you can't you there's no amnesia plant that you can take that's going to make you eat the corn out of your own poop anymore it's not going to happen you're going to have to go find more corn it's a weird analogy, but it's true. And we get we get there through removing contradictions and bottlenecks. That's why the flow state comes from getting back to who we really are. It's all about removing these contradictions and these lies and these 
misunderstandings versus because we're conscious, like you say, we're conscious. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Ah, okay. I have a little thought. What you told formally that the math uh, that the math make no uh, sense. You know, like chemtrails or they be poisoning us over generations. But how wonder uh, every time the next generation after us will be one head bigger and taller. You know. But all the poison, all the crap, and, so, and I think, okay, most of us eat this shit, uh, really, in the, in the cities. But we get uh, smarter, we get taller. Yeah, somehow the curve looks, uh, stats go up, not down. Then uh, um, I'm totally with you that uh, what want to make you dumps you down in this in this realm want to test you if you are fitter than that and rise up above this and every time you rise up it's come a stronger tune you know like you said it won't be easier and uh, um, you know i i think uh, when i must go back to the kiddie pool and stay there and have no space yes you're right in two uh, months i'm a suicide candidate you know uh, yeah, exactly. Um, your thought was amazing. Um, yeah, I'm out for now. <laughs> good to see you, Mo. Yeah, good to see you all. Well, um, I'm, I'm uh, conscious of the time now too because it's uh, it's uh, half the hour, um, different hours for everybody. But um, what's everyone thinking, James? I'm just you know mindful of everyone's time and. We I re-recorded my episode. This I tried to do a live stream today and uh, I re-recorded it, but sadly I didn't record this the slideshows, so I'm having to add the slideshows by hand into the video and I'm only about 20% done. So um, I stopped to do this. Uh, also, by the way, I, I love doing this. This is great. Uh, but also I really want to finish that video um, because I've been wanting to share that all week. I, w I wish it would have been ready for for today too so um i would probably only want to maybe hang out for another 30 minutes only just because i just really want to get the video out i haven't produced anything this week so but if anyone has any anything to talk about i i i can hang out for for maybe 30 more minutes unless you guys are ready to go too then that that's cool too so someone should speak up though i got some things i've got to got to take care of so um i may not stay for another half an hour myself but it's open right. for everybody. What's everyone thinking? Uh, yes, yeah, for me it's all good when you gotta go, which was a wonderful talk today. And yeah. uh, I'm uh, excited about the videos that you are uh, making. <laughs> Thanks, Bo. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to showing it to you. So yeah, well let's I guess we'll we'll call it we'll call it for now, I guess. But uh yep, yep I love doing good. this stuff. So hopefully we'll do it again. I mean not hopefully, we'll do it again next week. Yeah, thank yeah. you everybody for coming today. Thank you, James, and uh, thank you, Catherine. Thanks yeah, for... yeah, absolutely. It was a good, a good chat. I really enjoyed it. it um, where it went from the beginning. Yeah, it's and that's always interesting to see where it's where it's going to go. <laughs> um, while everyone's saying goodbye, I'm just going to play a little bit of a clip here um, for an intro video that we're doing for for this little kind of Friday Night Live fireside chat. I don't know if the audio is gonna work that well, um, but I'll just try playing it anyway. So yeah, but thanks everyone. And um, we'll see you uh, same time, same channel <laughs> next week. Yeah, 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 yeah thank you. It's half past two. Good night, everybody. Hey, good, good morning. Good night. Next time. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Dinner time. Have a great weekend. Good night. Good, good to see you, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, okay. That's 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 jolting a bit, isn't it? It's that whole bandwidth thing again. <laughs> yeah, it's that bandwidth music thing. Um yeah. 
But anyway, we'll, we'll, anyway. we'll, we'll keep polishing. We'll work it out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm going to head off now. <laughs> All right. Bye, bye guys. Everyone. Bye. Thank you. All right.